Welcome to the Research Highlights video series. These videos are intended to provide a summary of some of the research being conducted by members of the Hopkins Group at the University of Waterloo. This video will discuss some of our recent work on clustering in differential mobility spectrometry. For a more detailed discussion of ion solvent clustering in DMS, please read our publications in the Journal of the American Society for Mass Spectrometry and in the journal Molecular Physics. Here we discuss how seeding the DMS collision environment with a low partial pressure of solvent vapor affects changes to ion differential mobility and therefore trajectory through the DMS cell. Ion transmission through a DMS cell is tuned via two parameters, an asymmetric separation voltage that is composed of two sine waves and a DC compensation voltage. By monitoring the optimal conditions for ion transmission as a function of SV and CV, we generate what is known as a dispersion plot. For cations passing through an inert, non-interacting environment, we find that for optimal transmission, CV increases as SV increases. If we introduce a solvent vapor that interacts strongly with the cations, CV instead decreases with increasing SV. Introducing a vapor from a solvent that interacts weakly with the cation yields a dispersion curve that initially shows negative CV deflection with increasing SV, but which reaches a CV minimum and then reverses direction. For example, consider the dispersion plots for the tetramethyl ammonium ion. We find that acetone and acetonitrile interact strongly with TMA, while IPA, methanol, and water exhibit successively weaker interactions. If we increase the length of one of the alkyl chains, we see that the strength of interaction with the solvent vapor decreases. This effect is more pronounced when the chain length of all four alkyl groups is increased. We interpret this as a dynamic charge shielding effect. Since the ion-solvent interactions are dominated by the charge-dipole interaction, by increasing the alkyl chain length, we are also increasing the average separation between the interacting solvent molecule and the charged nitrogen center. This reduces the binding energies of the ion-solvent clusters that are apparently forming in the DMS cell. The observed trends in ion-solvent binding energies as a function of solvent and alkyl chain length are reproduced by high-level quantum chemical calculations. Moreover, if we plot our calculated binding energies against the SV at CV minimum, we see a strong positive correlation. This implies that we can use the DMS measurements to quantify ion-solvent binding interactions. We are currently exploring this in more detail and investigating the correlations between our high-pressure gas phase work and the solution phase properties of the ions that we are studying. For more information about the Hopkins Group members and the research that we conduct, please visit the Research Group website, which is hosted by the University of Waterloo Department of Chemistry. Thank you for your time and your interest in our work. See you next time.